I always say this, and I got to come up with something new, but good evening and welcome to Let's Talk Shop with Russ. It's kind of like I was watching some of the shows the other day and I started the same way. Good evening, good evening. And I'm like, got to come up with something different, make it a little bit uh, a little bit special. But anyway, thank you guys for all being out there. We had like uh, 10 or 11 thumbs up and like 10 or 11 people waiting for the show to start before the show ever started a while ago. So that was like really, really fantastic. I was like pretty cool about that. Even Aussie man was making comments about that's pretty great. 11 people waiting and 11, 11 thumbs up. So yeah, thank y'all very, very much for that. And also Aussie man uh, said something about my grandson's um, Pinewood Derby car out there. Yes. Thank you. Awesome, man. We had a lot of fun doing that. For those who don't know, if you go check me out on Facebook, I made some posts today. Last two or three weekends, my grandson and his father, my son-in-law, came over and we worked on his pine, pine wood, I could say piney wood, it's pine wood, piney wood derby car, and uh, built a real cool one, and we made it a Spider-Man type car. And I even 3D printed the uh, spider to go on the uh, top of the car, so... And uh, we did a real good job. I was really, really pleased. He won uh, first place. So you have to go check out the pictures over on uh, Facebook. I might show them after a while, but he won first place over in, uh, well, heck, I'll just show them now. Why not, why not just show the world? Let's see here. Let me go over on my page and get it set up. And there we go. And then I'm going to share, screen share, pull this down, pull this up. There's my grandson holding the trophies. We got uh, first place in design and second place in speed. So overall performance, we were really happy about that. Uh, yeah, first place in design, second place in speed. That's awesome. Yep. Big smiles all around. In There's the car. I 3D printed the spider for him. Put on top of the... Does that add to the aerodynamics? <laughs> well, actually, we were talking about that today because uh, there was one car faster than him, but the other car was really super faster than him. So I don't think the spider held him back that much. But uh, did, did, they, did they have to inspect them? They somewhat inspect. They have to go. They have to be five ounces or less. They can be no more than five ounces, and then they have to use the. Uh, you buy a kit that has the block of wood, and you can do whatever you want to it. And it has the axles and it has the wheels. So you have to go by those guidelines as far as you have to use their axles, their wheels, and the block of wood. And you can cut the block of wood any way you want to, and then you, if you cut so much off of it, you had to add, add weight to it. So they also sell weights. So actually, if you look, this part right here is the weights underneath the car. So you add weights to it, but you have to be careful about how much weight as far as it can't hang down too much because the track actually has a slot for each, the wheels on each side and kind of like a hump in the middle. So you get this hanging down, the weight hanging down too low and it'll actually rub the, uh, then you won't go at all. So. But that's the side view of it. But yeah, I was I was pretty uh, happy about the. Uh, it sure does look nice. Did a good uh, job. Thank you uh, about um, about it. Yeah, first place in design. So we got first place for the you know the looks of the car, and so and then we got the uh, second place in speed. He beat the other guy. Um, a couple of times they do more than one race so they get the overall speed they do about four or five sets and there's four tracks so they swap the cars around so everybody has a chance to run on each track in case there is a track that's faster and where there was a track that was faster if they put a gauge on the first track he would beat the other guy uh, aussie wants to know if you can grease the wheels uh, that's n you're you're not supposed to, but, but you can polish the axles. You're not supposed to. <laughs> you mean uh, you can't put a rail inside with ball bearings like we used to? Awesome. No. You hit a nerve here. 
<laughs> you no, you can't, the you're not supposed to. You're supposed to use the stuff that they give you, and that's it. But uh, dry graphite lube. Trust me, uh, I know that. I know for a fact that some people don't adhere to that. Let's just put it that way. So. Now, as far as the design of the car, you can change. You can do whatever. You can use the whole block and just stick wheels on it and run it down through there. I mean, you know, they don't care what the design of the car is and how much actually wood's left over. Uh, but we saw some tricks. Uh, I've read, been reading up on it. We saw some tricks that we're going to try next year just to see if it makes a difference. But, I mean, I'm pretty happy with second place in speed and first place in design. Gage was tickled. I mean, he was absolutely ecstatic. So. Does that mean he takes the overall prize, or, or no? They don't have an overall prize. Ah. No, I didn't have an overall prize. So, but well, anyway, how was the speedy car shaped? Huh? The the one that won on the speed. But how was it shaped? He was basically shaped like gauges, but he uh, did some curves in between the front and the back tire instead of being straight. Yeah, it was curved in some. So, uh, but that wasn't the secret. What he did was he to put his weights in, and I didn't, uh, um, I don't know where he got them from, but he used rounded weights and he went through the rear of the car and bored holes into the back of the block of the car on the thick end and run rounded weights in the side of there rather than putting them on the bottom of the car. Bullets so, work real good for that. Well, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking like, hmm, bolts might be. And we had a scale. My wife has a, a kitchen scale that is very, very accurate. In other words, I have actually took postage and put on there and put stamps according to it. And it went through the mail. And one day I did it and then took it up to the lady and she waited at the post office. She told me that I, her scale was the exact same way at the post office for a pack. Or, you know, we don't put weigh anything on there heavy, but it was the exact yeah. same. So her scale is pretty accurate. Let me talk about my sponsors before we get them. Devoble Technologies for web design, development, hosting. Visit devoble.com, FastCap Innovative Products for the professional woodworker. Go to FastCap.com, Rockler, 60 years in woodworking, create with confidence. Visit Rockler.com, uh, Bearwood Supply Company, your best choice for hard-to-find woodworking supplies. Go to Bearwood.com, Klingspor, the sanding specialist, woodworkingshop.com, and scroll saw, or Seiko, the scroll saw specialist, Seiko.com. Thank you very much to all my sponsors for being there and uh, giving me lots of great stuff to give away to all my uh, people that watch the show. So, and I'm glad to see everybody out there in the chat. Um, Donna's Wood Art. Hey, Donna Presley's out there. Michelle Marcoux's out there. I know Aussie Man's out there, and I appreciate all y'all being out there. We got a real great show tonight. We're going to talk about saw blades i've had so many emails about from people asking me what kind of saw blades i use most of the people know that i use a uh, uh either pegas saw blades for the scroll saw but they're talking about band saw and circular saw and stuff like that so we'll talk about that tonight before we get that far though uh it will before y'all introduce yourselves i just want to say what i just got something to say um i lost a good friend today um he rest in peace or her, either or, it doesn't matter. But um, we had over 30, uh, I know it's over 30, probably 35 years together. And um, they, uh, she really, I guess I'll just say she, she really worked her ass off for me, if you want to say it like that. But yeah, I lost a good friend today. I bought this back in probably 84, 1985, a serious craftsman. Router and the barons are finally going out. I was doing it today, and you wiggle it, you can hear them. But you anyway. don't just give up on a craftsman there. Well, I was get in somebody, there and you fix that. Yeah, somebody said that uh, about ordering the barons for it, and I think I might look online and see if, if E uh, replacement parts has them online, or or even Sears has them online and see. But yeah, this is this thing is. I, Around 35 years, I've used it, and I was doing some round. It was strapped underneath a, like upside down underneath a, a router table, and I used it for doing roundovers and campers on some of my projects. Well, it was actually, it gave it up on this cutting board right back here. This is not the same one that I had last week. And uh, as I was grounding over this, it finally just 
uh, started smoking and making noise. And I'm like, all right, I'll, before it just flat out quits, I'll go ahead and stop it. How, I mean, how can you tell point. it was bad? Was something loose or? It make, it's, make some, it's making noise. You can tell the, uh, the bear. And if you feel the shaft and turn it, you can feel it loose. I see. So it's got, it's not real tight anymore. The bearings are gone bad in it. I got good news for you, Russ. What's Road that? Carries to the craftsman tools. Yeah. Hey, but I don't want to give that one up. That's got seminal value and it still runs. So if I can look online and get a, uh, cause I know I don't have, as long as it's been, I know I don't have the, um, manual for it to order parts but if i can find the manual online and order the bearings for it then yeah i'll put bearings in it and try it i'll just keep it for a memento though i won't use it anymore so all right let's go down the line and let everybody uh, introduce yourself and i don't know why but it's either one of two people that's always on the each end so either way i start they always get it so um <laughs> Russ is pointing to the other end. You want me to go with the other end? All right, then I'll start. Brenda don't care. Go ahead, Brenda. I don't care. I'll start. I ain't as scared. Yep. <laughs> I'm Brenda G. Brenda G's Designs. You'll find me every place on the internet is Brenda G's Designs. I got a YouTube channel where I do comedy and crafts and, well, a little bit of everything over there. You never know what I'm liable to do next. And I'm on Twitch and Twitter and uh, gosh, Etsy and all over the place. You never know what you're going to find. So uh, hit me up, and if you got any questions, come over and see my channel. Great. Dixon. Hey, everybody. It's Dixon Hoffman. You'll find me on my website once in a while, Hoffman Signs and Decals, and search around on Facebook. Great. You were too fast. Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be just as fast. <clears throat> Jim Bashir's Driveway Workshop. And looking forward to talking about blades tonight. Cool. Katie. Oh, I, I'm, I'm, I guess I am ready. Uh, hi, I'm Katie. I'm uh, on, on Facebook, and, and I'm here to just smoke up the place. <laughs> He's hot. Yeah. <laughs> Dang, there made me spit that out. Um, just before we go to Matt, though, somebody said... Uh, uh, Jim Dockrell has a good point. Get a set of brushes for it and change them while you have it apart. Yeah, that's that's a good idea, Jim Dockrell, um, to go ahead and replace the brushes. Yeah, and look through it and see what else needs to have done once I take it torn apart. Um, but thank you for uh, mentioning that. I appreciate it. Uh, Matt. Hi, everyone. Matt Haas from Awesome Wood Things. Glad to be here. Got some videos on the Awesome Wood Things channel. Yes, I published a build video. I know it's a miracle. I haven't been publishing super lots of videos lately. And I also published a video over on Awesome Fun Things. That's my second channel. But I'm glad to be here. We're talking about blades. I like blades. Blades are fun. Thanks, Russ. You're welcome. <clears throat> Ken. Hey, uh, Ken, Moonpot Creations, my YouTube channel. You can find me there uh, most days. Just released a pretty good video, I think. Uh, go over there and watch it. Great. Uh, Al. Hey, Al Forte, uh, Odessa Woodworking and Maker Shop. Also, Kilroy79763 all over the place on Twitch tomorrow, 2 p.m. Hey, I've got a blade, too, but uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> It still works. <laughs> oh. Hey, Russ. Paul Corliss, Paul's Messy Workshop. Paul's Messy Workshop on YouTube and Instagram. Uh, hey, Russ, do you have just a minute for me to tell a Paul's Messy Workshop story? Sure, go ahead. Well, you know, Rockler, or as you say at Rockler, sells a vacuum hose kit that go you can put it like on your random orbital sander and then right. and then on the other end it goes into a shop bag i bought one of those a couple of years ago and i was looking for it one day and i couldn't find it and i told my wife i said i'm sure i bought one of those she says well you probably did and or didn't or left it there or something I said, well that just doesn't ring a bell well rockler just had a big sale 
on and that's that thing was on sale and it was free shipping so i ordered another one so today i went down to my shop and i opened it all up and i went and hung the hose up right next to the one that i bought last time <laughs> so, so now i've got two of them but i know where they're at <laughs> <laughs> that's good that is really good that's, I've a, done pretty messy, that's a pretty messy workshop there. Yeah, that's, I've done all back, practically the same thing trust me I've looked for something couldn't find it go buy another one and come back and within an hour or two after buying the other one run into the one that I was looking for so well, I have Steve Good put one of my videos on his uh, I saw that congratulations and uh, down at the bottom he said to have people remind me to clean up my shop You'd be yeah. amazed how many comments I've gotten to go <laughs> clean up my shop. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. He showed about your, uh, on your scroll saw, you, oh, the replacing the uh, blower. The blower to, hose, yeah. Yeah, the blower hose. That's pretty yeah. good. Yeah, that's good. That's actually some good information. I have people ask me, email me about that all the time about what to do about it. Usually, if it's just one connection, you can get that piece off and then heat it and relocate, uh, you know, then it won't be too bad. But I mean, I've seen them break in the middle. I mean, but that's really good. Well, I think you ended up spending instead of 26, like 16 or 18. Yeah. And that was with the players and everything. The, the right. whole part itself was only like eight bucks. Right. That's so. still, that's pretty good. Well, if you buy, I can assure you one thing. If you buy a new one from DeWalt and pay the 26, you're damn sure not going to get pliers. <laughs> that's right. That's right. And I think the only difference between them is the one from DeWalt is black and the other one is blue. I bet yeah. you they're made on the same line. I would almost be willing to bet too. So, All right. And then last but not least, my friend Russ. All right. My turn. Guaranteed not to be as wordy as the one on the other end. Uh, <laughs> Russ Meadows from Russ and Ailes Wood Shop. Y'all can find me on Facebook and Instagram, and I'm from the great and glorious state of Texas. Back to you, Russ. Uh, thank you. Yes, a great state of Texas. Uh, just a shout out to a few people who were out there in the chat. Uh, Patrick's Workshop. Hey, Patrick, uh, how is Ice doing? I haven't seen a post from an update for her, so if you don't mind posting out there in the chat. Um, how Ice is doing. Ice is uh, Patrick's dog, and she wasn't doing good. She had a... I think he said she had a stroke the other day and had to take her to the uh, uh, um, ER vet, you know. Um, but how's she doing? And then uh, let's see, Jim Dockrell's out there. Aussie Man's out there. Uh, Dan Inge, Inger Britson from Dan Inge Woodworking. Uh, Rob Sidney is out there. Um, Donna's Wood Art already mentioned her. Michelle uh, Marcoux's out there. Michelle Marcoux. Patrick's Workshop said, Time to get a new router company as a sponsor. <laughs> I'll be looking for one of those. So. <laughs> uh, so, all those people are out there in the chat, and I appreciate y'all being out there in the chat very, very much. So, okay. So, uh, where do I want to go from here? I've had a lot of people ask me, um, over the years, and I've led a, a lot of people to, um, what I thought were good, good products. Uh, matter of fact, Ken Moon, I think, uh, do you order the, uh, bandsaw blade I recommended to you, uh, from, uh, sawblades.com, didn't you? Yes, I did. I, I've actually ordered about six of them. So and they're good blades. Oh, I love them. I get about uh, about forty or fifty uh, turning blanks from one one uh, blade. Yeah, and if, did you notice that when you were turning the blanks, they were turning easier, rounder, as far oh, as yeah? It was it was like night and day. Yeah, and I was using those crappy old uh, Bosch blades. Yeah, because they're readily available. Nine bucks. You pay twenty five bucks, and it lasts twenty times longer. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I've let a few people, uh, Pegasus blades are very good. I, and uh, so are our, uh, um, 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 probably misled a few people while you're at it. Do what? You probably misled a few people while you're at it. <laughs> but uh, Pegasus blades, I use those for scroll saw. And I still like uh, the Flying Dutchman. Flying Dutchman are not a bad blade at all, at all either. And uh, 
uh, Bearwood Supply now is for scroll saw blades has come out or has started using the I think they're called Nequa blades and the Nequa blades are supposed to be the manufacturer of the Flying Dutchman blades. In other words, Nequa manufactures them and they sell them underneath the name of Flying Dutchman to certain dealers. So that's what I heard. So uh, Nequa blades are good. Flying Dutchman blades are good if they're the same thing and Pegasus are good. So, but I've had a lot of people ask me about circular saw blades, about table saw, miter saw and band saw blades. So we're gonna have that discussion tonight about blades. And I will show you uh, uh, I don't I know this could be a cut up show, Joe. I know I think Patrick just said something that was automatically held for review by YouTube. So that wasn't uh, uh, I can believe that, but I wonder what it was. Usually well, Jim Dockrell does that. Yeah. Oh, well, those two are going back. We love you, Jim. Well, I don't, I don't had it do that to me when it was something totally benign and I couldn't figure out what it saw that I, and, and it would later release it, but, you know, the algorithm will sometimes <laughs> pick up something that uh, we don't see. I've had it do me that on on your Twitch show. It uh, yeah. I type something in the chat and it has yeah, the it auto does that on some occasion. Yet. Well, what um, Patrick said actually needed to be blocked. So <laughs> for that particular one, and I like it, Patrick. We just can't say that, okay? If you don't mind, kind of, we just can't say that. <laughs> I'm sorry. So anyway, back to what I was talking about. So uh, so I'm gonna. I have downloaded some information. I have some stuff here. I'm gonna talk to you about and show you. So, um, uh, I wanted to show you tonight. So first off, kind of like let's go into blades and blade anatomy so that we can understand what we are actually talking about. Let me get this set up real quick and see which one I want to show. Um. First. Oh, I know what I wanted to go first. It was Russ looks like he's boring into our soul. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm I've got some websites that I have saved here that I'm trying to highlight and open them. So let's talk a little bit about blades and knives while he's doing that. <laughs> so I um, didn't show off my blade. Al, is that a real knife, or did you 3D print that? Well, I have a question while while we're waiting. Maybe some of you can answer this. How do you know when it's time to get a new blade versus sharpening the old blade? Or it, is it even realistic to sharpen the old blades? It's, it's, really, it's, it's, it's very realistic to sharpen them now. Yeah. Uh, uh, for instance... It's realistic to sharpen some of the blades. And why isn't this working for me? I'm having such a hard time tonight. We're busy talking about knives. Like right circular now. saw blades are definitely um, worth, if you spend a lot of money for them, or definitely have a good one, are definitely worth uh, sharpening. Band saw blades, uh, as cheap as they are, I would say pretty much on a band. I mean, you can hand sharpen it. Let's say that I was cutting a bunch of material. And my bandsaw blade started crapping out, and I didn't have one. I know it's going to take a couple of days to get in. I can hand sharpen that blade and finish my project for cutting without any problem. And then uh, when the other one come in, I just replace it and go on. They're very, very cheap, so it's really not uh, worth trying to sharpen a bandsaw blade. When it comes down to, like, circular saw blades, now sometimes you can spend some big bucks on circular saw blades. Big difference. So, yeah, those are worth resharpening. Uh, and spending the action because it costs you, especially if you can have it done local. I have a guy here locally that I can send my uh, blades to and he'll sharpen and send them back to me for, you know, a few bucks for each one. And so now if it breaks a tooth or whatever, you can chunk it because usually by the time you have it fixed or replaced, it's might as well just bought a new blade. So, but anyway, let's, uh, let me sh screen share the screen and show in a home about now. This is some, um, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, this is Vermont America put this out and I thought it was pretty good. And this is a dictionary of some of the terms that are used. Anti-kick, 
uh, is a good one. It's the a shoulder design that's engineered to prove the ease of cuts and reduce the effect of the saw blade kicking back due to overfeeding. Uh, I, I don't know if I have a picture, but I can show you what that actually is like, like on one of the other saw blades. Arbor is the shaft uh, that rotates the saw blade, referred to as the mandrel. The bore is the size, of the, in other words, the hole in the blade. Uh, bevels, angles on carbide teeth blade, teeth that have single bevel, double bevel, or all kind of bevel. Chipper is a tooth that is placed between the outside of the blades of the a dado set to adjust the width of the cut. Chipping a uh, condition caused when the saw blade lifts and tears wood fibers. Some of the stuff we don't know. Cross cut is to cut the saw uh, against the grain of the wood. Uh, a dado is a stack of blades for making like uh, uh, grooves in the wood, like kind of a router bit would do. Um, let's see, finishing saw blades. A higher tooth count provides smoother cuts. Typically refers to seven and a quarter blades with more than 40 teeth and 10 inch blades with more than 80 teeth. Uh, framing saw blades are a carbide tip blade used to make cuts in all types of wood. Uh, it's fast cutting with lower tooth count for saw blades. And it does, if you're using it on good wood, it will tear out really bad. It's used to come up two to four fours for framing and stuff. Kerf is a really good one. This is the width of the cut, including the steel plate thickness, plus any overhang on the carbide blade. So that's the kerf means how thick the blade cuts. As an average, most of your saw blades cut about an eighth of an inch of kerf. So a general purpose saw blade is one with lower tooth count used primarily for test or fast cross cutting and ripping. Uh, the gullet is the space between the teeth and the grind is there are many types of tooth grind. And here where we got some flat top grinds. Now these are the actual carbide teeth. Uh, alternate bevel or top bevel, uh, triple chip and tri grind, combination grind. Uh, a hollow ground is a concave bevel edge on a tool. Um, I'm looking down here to see what run out is the amount of left to right movement a saw blade makes during operation, often referred to as a wobble or warp. In other words, on most of your saws, whether it be a high priced saw or um, a cheap saw, all blades have a little run out. Uh, the cheaper the saw, the more the run out. The more expensive the saw, the less the run out. But the blade will wobble a little tiny bit. Uh, it just It's just an inherent thing with those. Uh, and that can also run out, if you have a cheap saw, can also uh, go along with the kerf to make the, the cut, the opening that the blade's making a little wider because of the wobble. So, and now we're talking about really cheap saws. Now we're not talking about high-end saw, cabinet saws and stuff like that. Uh, tear out is the saw blade tears out the grain of the workplace. Uh, thin curve saw blade is a saw blade with reserve, uh, reduced curve to cut width. Uh, tempered is to bring the piece of steel and a blade to desired hardness by reheating and cooling. Those are just some of the terms. And I can post some of this stuff if y'all are wanting to. Uh, I've got two of these up there. For some reason. And then we'll do. Okay. So in a circular saw blade, this is the anatomy of the uh, teeth on the blade. And we talk about the bevel, the gullet, and the curve, and everything else. So this is the very top, considered the top of the tooth. The kerf is the width of the tooth. The bevel is the side uh, or a side grind, either on the left or on the right, or it can just be a flat uh, all the way across the top uh, we showed before. This is the face of the tooth, and then this is the gullet, and we'll talk more about the gullet uh, in a minute. Um, the, usually the wider the gullet, which means the lesser the teeth, is for chip removal, for the dust removal for the blade. As it comes around, it actually gets rid of the sawdust rather than keeping it in, in the cut. If it stayed in the cut, it, you just be burning your wood and burning the blade up. So it needs to dump that sawdust out as it cuts. And so that's some of the performance of the gullet. Uh, the bevel is teeth can have a single bevel, two bevels, or no bevel at all. 
types of bevels can alternate from tooth to tooth on in any given blade. A bevel is what gives a blade its specific cutting pattern. The gullet is the space between the teeth that clears the work of chips. After the cut, the deeper the gullet, the more efficiently the chips are cleared. And kerf, once again, is the face of the tooth where the actual cutting takes place. The pattern of the alternating kerf, known as the grind, um, decides what application a blade is best for, and that's also the width, uh, how big of a... Uh, from one inch down to one six, about one sixteenth or a little over one sixteenth. So you have the flat top grind, alternate, triple grind, multi-purpose carbide teeth type of grind, the tri grind, the left trim grind, the right trim grind, solid surface grind, and a high thirty degree ATM grind. Now, when you're looking for saw blades, you need to be aware of some of these grinds for what particular type of saw uh, blade you're wanting to use and what you're going to use it for. Uh, let me once again look and see here. Uh, okay, so these are band saw blades, which we'll go to in a few minutes. So those are, that is that. Now let me go into here and pull up a few pictures. Okay. <clears throat> Hook angle. Hook angle is very, very, very important on a um, circular saw blade. The more hook um, means the more aggressive cut, but also what it does to the um, to the wood as it's cutting it. For instance, a a hook angle will be real. A, a, a how do I want to say a positive hook angle will be real good on a table saw. The reason being is because the way the blade cuts forward, that forward cut is actually pulling the blade or the wood down to the top of the table. So actually, it helps keep the wood down on the table in a sense. So where a real high hook will be bad on a miter saw due to the fact that the blade is cutting and pulling the wood up. So it would have a tendency to want to pull the wood up out of your hand. So in that case, you would want either a, a negative hook or a low hook angle on a miter saw blade. And that's what these are showing right here. A minus hook angle compared to a 20 degree hook angle. That's a good point, Russ. I, I've never thought about that, but and I've probably got the wrong blade on my miter saw or yep. on the table saw. Gonna yep. That next time. Yep. So you need to really look at that. Uh, like it says right there, it says right there, low negative hook angle prevents overly fast feed rate and prevents the blade from climbing stock being cut. Good choice for sliding minor radial arm saws. High angle, good for rip blades and used on a table saw. So, Don't you also use a like a negative angle or a, uh, a real low angle when you're cutting uh, like melamine or real real uh, uh, veneers and stuff like that? I, you could, yes. And also when you're cutting stuff like that, a lot of times the higher tooth count helps to keep the tear out and keep the smooth cut. So in other words, you wouldn't want to use a, two, uh, uh, a, a blade that had 20 teeth you would be wanting to use a blade that had 40, 60, you know, teeth to cut that melamine so that the cut would be, the more teeth, the smoother the cut also. The lesser the teeth, what, think about it. If you have less teeth, the gullets are bigger. They can get rid of more chips and more dust, and they're going to make a rougher cut. But those blades were like for your power saws when you're doing framing in houses and stuff. If you're going to cut some really nice lumber, your melamine or whatever, you want a, and a smooth cut on that really. If you're going to cut some walnut, you want a higher teeth count to keep the, um, the cut smoother instead of being so rough. So let's see if some of these will go through. Uh, nope, that's for a bandsaw. And then that's what we talked about on that other... Uh, Crosscut blades, uh, and here's another good example. More teeth yield smoother cut across the wood grain. 
Smaller gullets prevent too fast of a feed rate. So you have to slow down because you got more teeth, but it's going to give you a super a, a lot smoother of a cut. Um, fewer teeth required when cutting with wood grain and large gullets allow for a faster stock removal because it also can get rid of that sawdust that's um, in there. Do we have any uh, um, questions out there in the uh, chat? I haven't seen any. Uh, I made a zero clearance insert for my wall blade works so much better. Uh, zero clearance inserts for your blades are actually fantastic. And I would actually recommend that you use zero clearance inserts on all your blades. They're not, they're inexpensive to buy. And uh, they're actually kind of really, if you have a CNC, you can make your own. And that helps a tremendous amount for tear out. So that helps you a lot. Um, Aussie Man says, I keep three table saw blades, one fine for cross cuts, one for ribbing. Yes, that's you should do that. That is exactly the way you should if whatever you want to uh, have. And then the anti kickback design. Actually, here we can show it right here. And let me zoom in on this. This uh, right here on the back of this uh, blade, on this hump right here, this is actually called the anti kickback design. That helps on the, when you're getting blades, and if you notice the other one on the left doesn't have that, but when you're getting blades that have fewer teeth, uh, especially on if it, the blade is being purchased for a table saw, sometimes on some of their designs, you will see this little hump on the back of the tooth. And what that is, is to help the kickback on the table saw from aggressively cutting. I guess it just fills in the space. Yeah, well, it, yeah, it fills in the space, but it just helps keep it from kicking back. I don't know exactly the scientific thing on how it does it. Trust me. I'm not an engineer. I just look at pictures and know what to do. <laughs> Russ, I'll uh, share. I had a, a run out issue where the way, where the blade was wobbling or not or vibrating and making the, the curve wider, but it was the cheapest table saw blade. I had bought my nice floor standing one and I had a like, a $70 bench top <laughs> piece of crap table saw. And I took the, the blade out of that and put it in my nice one. And it, I would see it. it. It would, it would wiggle. And I'm like, this, the whole saw is garbage. Then I bought Diablo blades. I'm like, Oh, I see what a real blade's supposed to do. Yeah, I, can, Rob I can tell. Put, put out there that he had the anti kick background off and yeah that's all a matter of preference if you'll notice on this one on the right it shows at the end of a, at the end of the line of teeth they have an anti-kick back on it but this is comparing a general purpose blade and a combo blade the general purpose is designed to provide exceptional results and all kites and all cut type materials shearing action of high and atb yield teeth yields and ultra smooth cuts Aggressive hook angle and slightly larger gullets. The combination is designed for both cross cutting and ripping. The group configuration for on the top bevel and plus one flat top. Small gullets between teeth and larger gullets between the groups. Uh, so there you have the combination for of those. I saw a lot of people in the chat talking about the dado stacks that are old and they they wobble you know like yes the, like the wobble ones i yeah, have wobble. one of those yeah i don't like those that's I, the scariest yeah. thing in my shop yeah yeah let's see if i close this out and look uh if you do a three quarter inch width it's completely flat on the bottom if it's a different width the bottom <laughs> it's not uh, you know open. what the, you know what's weird about that i was gonna say it won't do a flat cut so only if oh, it's exactly three yeah. quarters it will all right but i saw my dad had one when i was growing up you know so i'm like okay when i get my table saw i gotta go to sears and get that wobble blade you know because that's what my dad had yeah the i think those are dangerous too and this is just a picture of the um, overall circular saw blade, the notch of the teeth, uh, down here it shows the number of teeth on the blade, the type, the bore diameter, thickness of the blade, number of maximum rounds, direction of rotation, material, here's the bore diameter, um, your step, your teeth, 
I thought that one was. Is that a table good. saw blade or a? a... Uh, this one kind of like looks like a table saw blade. Does anybody know what these slots in the blade are for? Cooling. Clear sawdust. I uh, heard cooling it's, and I heard cooling. It's 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 both, but that's sometimes Vibration. if you have too many of those, it also makes the blade vibrate. That's actually not true. And uh, you're, it does have nothing to do with the sawdust. It's actually for uh, expansion of the blade. They will put these slots in there so as the blade starts to heat, we all know that blades, uh, a metal expands. So these are expansion cracks to keep those uh, the blade as straight as possible as it starts getting hot. So that's actually what that's for. Jim Dockrell got it right in the chat. Jim Dockrell, yep, expansion. And, and it helps. It does also help with vibration and noise. But its primary responsibility is to for expansion as the blade starts getting hotter. And it starts, think about it. If it's a solid piece of metal and starts getting hotter and starts to expand, it's going to want to warp. Therefore, it's going to want to wobble. With these cut slits in it, as it starts getting hotter, it has a place to uh, move without pushing, you know, up against one another. So, but it's mostly for expansion. It does help on vibration and noise. That one's a 40 tooth, right? Yeah, this is a 40 tooth here. Yeah. This one that I've got here is a 140 tooth. Wow. Ooh. And it's a, supposed to be for plywood. We'll see tomorrow. Whether okay. All right. So this is um, the a positive hook angle and a negative hook angle. That's just another look at it. As you can see, if you can see the tooth is more leaning more front, uh, there's actually a longer distance across the back of the tooth. And uh, notice that H is uh, kind of widened out. And then you have uh, a negative hook angle. I don't know what that uh, C clearance angle means exactly, but. That's, but you can get, do uh, what? I'm sorry. That's a, a chunk of uh, like carbide steel that's welded on there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, uh, this is, these are carbide tip blades, yes, that we're talking about here. Uh, general purpose cross cut blades. I think we went over that one. We went over that one. So, angled. Yep. So, pretty much we've kind of covered it for circular saw. Now, let's go do, let's go to the, uh, oh, here's one. Here's another one showing the 20 degree hook and a minus five degree. And that would be the difference between a. Uh, this would the one on the left would be for a table saw. Yeah. The one on the right would be for a miter saw. Yes. Nice. Yep, because the one on the left is going to want to pull the lumber back down toward the table. Okay, so if it's if you think about it, your miter saw is actually running in reverse, so that it's actually want to try to lift the board off the table. Yep. So therefore, you don't need any help. So you want to go with a negative hook, which helps you to hold it down on the table easier. When you're what about a circular saw? A uh, circular saw, you can use a negative uh, a twenty degree. Yeah, it's not affected like that. Yeah. Yeah, it really it it, it it's really not affected as much as the um your um. What about a piece of plywood with a, tur a circular saw uh, <laughs> screwed on the bottom of it? <laughs> okay, so. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about bandsaw blades here real quick. Now, I didn't realize there was all these combination of bandsaw blades. Uh, but here you have uh, your raker, your modified raker, your very raker, your alternate, your wavy, very set. Uh, I didn't realize wow. that the teeth could be configured in so many different ways, you know. Uh, single level set and dual level set now on a bandsaw blade and let's see if i've got a little bit better of a picture here of the bandsaw blade uh, i think that's the one yes yeah, this one yeah uh skip tooth standard tooth rounded back and hooked hooked rip these are some of your type of um bandsaw blades 
Uh, they actually operate the almost the same exact way as a circular saw blade as far as this gullet goes. Uh, the more teeth, a smoother cut without, uh, without any problem. And then the curve of the blade, how it's set up, which we're kind of going back there, how the teeth are angled left or right, or how many two's left and one's right, or however the configuration, that also sets up for a more smoother cut. So, uh, and then the deeper the gullet, uh, the gullet in this, on the bandsaw blade is actually the same uh, thing, designed for the same thing as it's on the circular saw blade. And that is to dispense of the sawdust um, to get it out of the cut so that it can continue to cut and it doesn't build up. So this is a hooked rip. I'm actually going to have to find out because I do not know this answer. And that is on the blade that uh, I use and Ken uses, what kind of a configuration of the blade that it actually um, uh, has, which is these. So I don't know what, I don't really don't know on mine. What kind, if it is a raker, a modified raker, or a, a very set, I don't know. I'll have to find that information out. So, and uh, I think, this is one more I wanted to show. Well, yeah, here's the anatomy of a bandsaw blade. This is a real good one. And you can get an idea of what it looks like. Number two is the gauge, the thickness of the blade. Number four is the set, the bending of the tooth, either right or left. Um, number seven we have here is the teeth per inch. Number eight is the tooth pitch. Or is that number five? Here, let me get my glasses. <coughs> Hang on, people. Uh, this is number six. And this is the tooth pitch that I was looking at right here. Uh, number one is the blade back. That's the body of the blade. Like it'll be a half inch or three quarter inch. Uh, number nine we're looking at right here is the gullet depth, the distance from the tooth to the bottom of the gullet. Number eight is actually the gullet right here. Number five is the actual tooth. Number 11 is the tooth flank, the angled back surface of the tooth opposite of the tooth face. Uh, number 10 is the tooth face. Number 13 is the tooth tip. So there's your anatomy of a, a bandsaw blade. But I will tell you, I know without a shadow of a doubt on my bandsaw blade, the, the tooth has a configuration of the teeth being bent to the left or the right. I just don't know what um, what the configuration. I've never, I never paid attention to what the configuration is. Once I found a blade that cut real good, I just stuck with it. <laughs> I do know about configurations and what they are. I just don't happen, happen to know the configuration of that particular blade. I would like to find it out, though. So, but all these things, each bandsaw blade is cut for, you know, made for different things. Um, I will tell you this much that I learned on my bandsaw. If you're only operating at about a horse and a half, uh, what I would call a normal bandsaw that most of us have in our shops, you do not need anything more than a half an inch, even for uh, resawing. Uh, th a a, a three-quarter inch blade is designed for bigger saws that are like two, two and a half horsepower, and it will actually hurt you on resawing to go with a bigger, thicker blade. You're thinking the bigger the blade, the better it is for resawing, and that's not necessarily true. The, you know what? A weird thing. I watch. I like to watch David Picciuto's videos when he does bandsaw boxes and stuff. But he's always got like a four tooth per inch blade on there. Yeah. No matter yeah. what he does, and you would think that you know that he's trying to to curve around and make a bandsaw box and some or something that he would want something with more teeth on it. But he gets by with it. He just whips stuff out on that uh, bandsaw like. You know nobody's business. How, how right. wide is the blade length, or how deep? 
how deep is his gullet? You mean, or yeah, how, how big is how big is the blade for, you know, for, for his curve cuts? He uses a a three sixteenth yeah. blade. Yeah, I think for his ripping, if I'm not mistaken, he uses it's either a half inch or a five eighths. Yeah, th those little blades don't like me. Um, <laughs> for ripping or resawing, Paul. For resawing, I'm sorry. Okay. I should have not. Um, let me do this real quick, and I'll get it over with so I can come back. Uh, not shop staring because I wanted to go and show you. Uh, let me go back to here. Go back to ah. Oh, here we go. This is the one I wanted. Now, this is about um, hardback versus flex back or soft back bandsaw blades. Okay. Now, my good friend Izzy Swan and I were talking a couple of years ago, two or three years ago, I don't remember, but I was telling him I was having problems with getting a good bandsaw blade. And he turned me on to sawblades.com. And uh, and he also told me the difference, which I, at that time, two or three years ago, I did not know the difference between a hard back and a flex, a flex back bandsaw blade. Um, basically, what it, e, it is, is a hard back saw bandsaw blade or heat treated in order to achieve extra stability needed when cutting a variety of materials. They are made from high carbon steel band with hardened teeth. These both enable it a more accurate cut and can be used to work with materials that include things like aluminum, carbon steel, graphite, bronze, plastic, and stuff like that. Uh, that is generally why they hard back them. But let me tell you, they make all the difference in the world when you're resawing. Uh, and then a flex back, on the other hand, also made from carbon steel, but with a flexible back. In other words, they don't have that hardened steel back side of the blade to keep it from bending. That It's more flexible. And um, there's what your difference is. So if you're going to be doing where you're going to be making some sconces or something where you got some curves and stuff like that and you want to cut out with, flex bla uh, blades will be great or flex back blades will be great for that kind of thing. Yeah, that's what Aussie, uh, Aussie said that in the, the uh, chat yep. here. He said they're fantastic for tight turns. Yep, but if you're going to be resawing or cutting bowl blanks like Ken does and I do and doing a lot of resawing, and I'm not using, I use my scroll fall saw for all that other kind of stuff. You want a hard back saw blade. And until about two or three years ago, I think it was three years ago when I talked to my friend Izzy, we were in a conversation about this and he just, he explained all this to me. And then I went and started looking it up and started, wow, I never knew that. So that is what led me to start buying my blade. I've got three of these stupid things open right now. Uh, these blades... sawblade.com and this is the q201 series q saw hardback carbon blade so uh this is the blade that i highly highly recommend if you're doing a lot of ripping a lot of resawing uh, uh milling of material so to speak and you're not doing the curves and everything else or cutting bowl blanks like ken does this is the blade that i would highly recommend for you and it's at sawblade.com how expensive are those, Russ? They're not bad. They're a little, they're a little more pricey than your average. Like, let's say that you can usually get a, a saw blade for $15, 20 bucks. These run in here around twenty to twenty-five bucks. I think Ken, didn't you say yours? I, I'm ordering some right now. They're about fifteen eighty-three each. Then uh, I'm ordering two of them, so it's like nine bucks shipping. Yeah. But uh, just so you know, this is what I use for the bowl blanks right here too. Yeah. I use the uh, three hook uh, TP on that. Right. So these sawblades.com. If, like I said, if you're just doing milling and uh, nothing else, uh, where you're doing a lot of ripping, uh, um, you know, cutting your the stuff down to size, resawing, 
then I would highly recommend these. And let me tell you, they have made all the difference in the world. Has anybody had a in here had a or in the in the chat too? Have you ever sent your blades out someplace to have them repaired after they uh, broke? Oh, uh, as far as bandsaw blades, yeah, I, they're so cheap I'd throw them away. I, I mean, had one of these broke uh, break, uh, and they replaced it for free after yeah. I shamed them. I shouldn't have shamed them, but I did. <laughs> yeah, if I mean, if it was to break within a, like, if I bought it and cut like a half a dozen things in a broke then i call them up and get a new one but i mean if i've pretty well cut what i would say my life it's life expectancy then i would tell you right off the bat i just throw it out and buy another one and then the second thing for your table saw and they actually make them uh for your um um Miter saw also. And this is the world's thinnest carbide tip saw blade. It was developed for NASA's satellite communications research program. Jeez. Yeah. It's called the micro curve blades. They also sell them um, for, um, they'll make custom saw blades for you. But they uh, come in 10 or 12 inch. Um, and you can also use them on your chop saw. If uh, if people out there are thinking about doing that for their table saw, then you check and see if that their table saw will work with the thin curve and the micro curve because my, my grizzly won't won't use thin. Yeah, curve. some of them won't. That's micro. a good. Yeah, some of them won't. And this is the blade that I highlight. Now, is this blade for everything? No. And I will explain to you in just a few minutes. I just want you to see this is called the micro. This is what I predominantly have on my saw when I'm cutting oak, or uh, yeah, oak too. When I'm cutting any high dollar wood, such as cherry, uh, walnut, uh, mahogany, um, any wood that's what I call a high dollar wood and not your fir or whatever, or your pine that you're getting. Now, if it's clear pine, I'll cut it with that blade. But any of what I, not junk wood, if it's going to be a two before or something, I change the blade and put another type of blade on it. But for any of my, this thing cuts glue ready joints. In other words, I can cut a piece of um, a walnut off of it and glue, glue it up. I don't need to do anything to it, like run it through a joint or anything. That's the, it's so incredibly smooth. And the thing about it is it's so thin let me get off of here and go back and uh, stop sharing. How do you determine if your saw used that thin a blade? You're going to have to check with a manufacturer. It's so thin that think about this. Normally, a blade cuts one eighth of an inch. So if I make eight cuts, I've lost an inch of material. With this blade, I've only lost a. If I want to lose an inch, I can make 16 cuts. So I double my cuts. And when you say, well, that don't sound like a whole lot. When you start talking about inches and purple heart and some of this wood that you're cutting to build stuff out of, a one inch piece of wood, yeah. Especially if it's like five foot long, two inches thick. So it can actually save you money. Now the blades, I didn't show you the price. The blades are about 180, 200 bucks. So that's what the blades cost. But that's the only blade that goes on my table saws is for, the, for cutting those type of uh so so the kerf is the is the distance from one side of the one the two? thickness of the blade that's the thickness of that blade because I'm, I'm measuring the teeth on this one and it's 0 0.07 inches and the blades point zero five you would want you want to measure the teeth the width of the teeth. Yeah. From from the left side to the right side, that right. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So that's point zero eight, which is. And I think this is point one, one zero. So that one doesn't have isn't a carbide, is it? Yes, no. it's carbide too. Oh, it is okay. This one. Is, now where here's the thing about it is, it actually has heat sinks. These are actually heat sinks. Wow. On the sides because it's so thin. To help suck the heat out of this to keep it from warping these are actually so you're limited to i can only get two inches of depth cut i'm i lose this part of the cut 
Now they make them full depth, which are smaller, but they're a little bit thicker. The blade itself is. But this you is mean diameter, it's smaller? The thickness. Okay. They make these in 10 and 12 inch diameters. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if you want like a deep cut, see these, that would mean that these heat sinks are smaller. Oh, the heat sink's smaller. Okay. Right. So the blade is thicker to compensate for that. So you're not going to get this micro curve cut. That's pretty cool. Yeah, this is the blade that I use on my, and let's put it this way. You say to pay in $200 and 200, I think it's a hundred plus shipping and 180 plus shipping. We can mm -hmm. go back on the look at the website, but uh, if somebody wants to pull it up, it's called Total Saw Solutions. But uh, on this micro curve blade, uh, what you think about this is, this is the second one I've ever owned in three years. And I cut with this thing all the time. It's lasted me three years. So what I did was my other one was getting dull and I could tell it. I ordered this one, which is brand spanking. Well, I've cut on it a few times. I just took off my table saw today. I ordered this one, which is brand spanking new. And I'm sending the other one back for them to resharpen and send it back to me. Now you all use that for ripping? I use it for cross cut and ripping on my table saw. Yeah, I could like on these, uh, this, um, when I'm cutting these little pieces, I'll set up the thing and just cross cut them. So it does great on cross cuts. It does great on ripping. I don't have any problems. But like I said, it saves and wood. And plus, I mean, that seems like a lot, $180. But whenever you think about how many saw blades do you go through a year normally if you're doing a lot of wood on a, on a table saw? So let's say three a year at $25, $30 a piece, you're spending as much or more than I'm spending without any problem. And look, I'm getting a much cleaner, nicer, finer cut. Trust me. Yeah, the link is in the chat for the okay. micro curve. Yeah, the heat, sink looks like, uh, the heat sink looks like it also stabilizes the blade as far yeah, as... Well, uh, yeah, uh, the heat uh, sink stabilizes the thinness of it too, but it also, like I said, it helps... Yeah, but, but it, out of it. So, uh, and you can... 84 to 214 dollars. Yeah. For the 10 inch. Micro the 10 inch. 40. Yeah. Well, the, the full depth one is like 20 something dollars more than this one. Yeah, I can't tell which one the full depth one is. This includes two whole slots, free shipping, free shipping. But now you can see the difference. This thing is, this thing will cut you. I mean, I, it is razor sharp. But now you can see the difference in the thickness of the teeth. So can. Yep. It's half the size. Yep. 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 This is a normal. Uh, this is an old one I had, an old old ham or whatever I bought years ago, a piece of crap blade. Um, this is what I put on my table saw to cut junk wood. If I'm going to cut some fur, if I'm going to put some pressure treated, if I'm going to cut some barn wood, I'm going to throw a 20 or $30 cheap blade and cut it with this. If I'm going to cut walnut, if I'm going to cut cherry, if I'm going to cut mahogany, I cut it with this. Is the, is the micro curve one better on the tear out? Yes. Oh, yes. If you use a zero clearance with this, oh my God, it's like hardly any tear out. But this is, yeah, I use junk blades for, if I'm going to do pressure, if I need a two before ripped and pressure treated, this goes on my saw. You know, some junk blade, a Diablo or something that cost me 20, 30 bucks. If I hit a nail in some barn wood, throw this out the door and go buy another one. When I'm getting the rough song cut, the nice stuff, cherry walnut, you know, purple heart, whatever I'm going to uh, cut to make a, something really nice out of, this goes on the saw and that's what I cut with it. So I have several of these junk blades, I call them around. Um, ow, 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 ow. Ooh, ooh. I'm telling you, it is sharp, people. It is really sharp. Yeah, Aussie man says a thin blade puts less strain on your saw motors too. Yeah, I would I would think it just Yep, it will. Uh, this is I mean that's a junk blade. Um what I call a junk blade. This is another junk. I don't even know what brand this is. This is a combination junk blade. And I'll buy these cheap blades and I'll throw them on there and I'll use them for cutting all the junk material. 
Now this, when I had my DeWalt, and I did not take the Hitachi saw blade off to bring it in, but that's a thin curve. It's not as thin as that one. But when I bought my DeWalt uh, sliding compound miter saw, this is the blade that came on it. I never used it. It's brand spanking new. Uh, and I've had that DeWalt compound miter saw for 15 years, 18 years. It finally, some of the bearings started going back out, or started going out in it, and I retired it, going to fix it. But I went and bought the Hitachi uh, compound miter saw. I love that thing. And it's got the manufacturer Hitachi blade on it, which is a thin curved blade, and it cuts fantastic. And I've had that thing now for two years, cut with it all the time, and the Tachi blade's still going strong on that sucker. But this is what came with it. But now, I was really impressed with this blade that I used to run on my, this is kind of like the construction or contractor series is what I want to call it. Uh, I bought this blade and put it, which replaced that blade that came on the saw. Is that and an I would, tooth? Yeah. Uh, it's either 60 or 80. Uh, well, let's see, put it this way. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 times one, two, three, four, five. What is that? 60? 16 times five? Yeah. 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 All right. So it's 60. This is 60. 80. 80. No. 80. 80. Okay. 80. All right. So it's 80. 80. 80, tooth. 80. 80 yeah. Okay. But this worked fantastic on my DeWalt saw. I never had any complaints out of this. The because of the high, it's it's carbide tipped. Because of the high uh, teeth, it cut, we cut moldings. You know, the big wide five and a quarter inch um, chair rail or uh, crown mold. And I mean, I cut and cut and cut and cut and cut and cut with this thing. But and, you like the Hitachi better, right? Uh, as of right, right now, now, yes, it cuts so much fine quality. What, be, yeah. What do you like about it over a Dewalt? Over the Dewalt, yeah. It, it cuts you said you had a Dewalt before, right? Yeah. Well, uh, the um, the reason I retired the Dewalt is number one is the bearing started going bad in it. Yeah. And I wanted to look for another saw because the Dewalt has like a 18 inch. Uh, you have to keep it about 18 <coughs> to 24 inches away from the wall. And the newer saws, like the Itachi and the Bosch, can go right up against the wall because the arms pull forward rather than shoving back. And so I wanted to try that when I, I read some of the reviews and I caught the Itachi on a really good deal with the stand for free. I decided to go with the Itachi. Uh, the Itachi, um, uh, the blade number one cuts smoother than this blade does. Really, really smooth. And it's just... Right out of the box, it was far more accurate. I didn't even have to adjust it for 45. I was making some picture frames right out of the box with it. Never had to adjust it. Wow, the that's good. Yeah, the 45s are right on target. I'm like, wow. And then the blade just cuts so much smoother. And it's thinner than this. It's kind of like a thin curve Hitachi blade. And um, so I really like the Hitachi. Um, I didn't want to take it off the saw because it's too much of a pain. You got to take the blade, that blade guard that comes down. I got to pop it off and... So I'm like, but this is what I used to use on the DeWalt. And I, I was really, really impressed with these for that saw. Uh, we cut hundreds. I bought another one, matter of fact, and we did the same thing when this one, we get dull. I have a place that locally would sharpen these. I just take them by and drop them off. And after, I wait about a week and go by, or he'll call me and tell me, come pick them up. And I used to drop off and I'd always have the blades. He'd be sharpening one, one brand new, and I'd go pick that up and just flip them back and forth. Now, this is, I haven't ever tried it, uh, but I got rid of it right off the bat. I don't, I don't even know how well it would cut because it's brand, come right off the, this thing's like 15 years old. <laughs> came right off the saw. Now we'll talk about um, uh, this is some of the, yeah, I already showed those, I think. Yep. And then I just buy, for my circular saw, um, seven and a quarter inch circular saw, I just buy any blade and stick on it. I'm not particular about that. Uh, this is a DeWalt. I buy, the. I've really had good luck with Diablo. I will say that for the amount of money you spend on the Diablo blades that you can get at Home Depot, they're pretty well worth it. They're a little bit more expensive, some of these cheaper, but they really hold up good and they cut really nice. So. I bought a Diablo 
thin curve for my circular saw and it just it's fantastic yeah so i would i would say if i was going now these are all what i call junk blades like for instance if i had to cut a hole in a roof with shingles one of these blades is going on my circular saw and i'm going to plunge cut through and cut it all cut right through the shingles right through the these things will cut these old cheap blades will cut right through the shingles right through the nails without any problem cut my holes put my roof vent in or put my exhaust fan in for the roof up on top of it and finish it all off take this blade off my saw and throw it in the garbage so that's the reason i hold on to so many of these junk what i call junk blades is because of that i'll need one of them one day and i won't have to go buy anything use one of these junk blades cut through that crap and we cut the eave drip off of my house when we put the new metal on and had new metal eave drip because we didn't take the shingles off we just um put the purlins across the top of the shingles and we took one of these junk blades put it in circus saw, and just run back and run just cut the eave drip off and let it fall off on the ground we didn't try to pry it off I went through like two or three of these blades just to cut the eave drip off. Cut right through the shingles, right through the aluminum, right through everything. And I do, I buy all kinds of blades. I have a tile saw. And um, I have found out on most of your uh, diamond blades, all of them are about the best. Uh, good. This is a husky for my tile saw uh, as a spare. They're pretty well. I don't think that they're, I haven't found a real big difference in them. Some of them may last a little longer than others, but I just buy whatever and throw on my tile saw. Now, uh, one thing I wanted to point out was, is when you, they recommend you keep, they will not accept your blade back from Total Saw Solutions unless it's packaged in the original packaging. So I just wanted to show you what this thing is packaged like. So it's, it's inside this cardboard, which is inside this cardboard which is inside their box, which is inside that, which it comes in a plastic sheath, which comes with a vinyl rubber gasket that goes around all the teeth to protect the teeth, and then it's down inside this. So, so. Do, you get, do you get a tin of beluga caviar and champagne <laughs> with that? Yeah, or real. just the caviar? For real. Yeah. But yeah. And so if I send that other one back that came off my tickle saw that needs to be re uh, sharpened to them, um, I'm going to put it back in this box with everything back the same exact way and then ship it back to them. What do they charge for resharpening? I don't know. I was going to call them next week and ask them what their average charge, if they could give me just an idea, you know, to resharpen it. But this is the box that came in the microcurf. Now, do you clean your, your blades very often on your saw? <laughs> when they wear out. <laughs> I think that's a no, Paul. I, I never did either. And my saw wasn't cutting very good. And I took the blade off and I cleaned it. And man, I couldn't believe the difference. Uh, uh, much, yeah. I Well, the micro curve really hasn't really gotten all that. Gun the other one hadn't gotten all that gunked up. It's just, I can tell that the it's not cutting as smooth and it's not cutting as nice as the other one or as it did when I first got it. And then when I put this one on, I was like, yeah, the other one needs to be sharpened. Uh, yeah. As far as cleaning them, uh, I clean mine with lacquer thinner. Uh, you can use oven cleaner, soak them in oven, you know, the spray off or what is it? Not off. Um, yeah, yeah. It's off, isn't it? Is it off? Yeah. The spray yeah. On oven. That's uh -huh. the for solid case. <laughs> yeah. Easy off. The, uh, but anyway, oven cleaner is good to clean them. You just want to get that gunk, that tar, the residue off of them. I usually don't have to clean mine. I usually wear them out, just throw them away, <laughs> except for that blade. My junk blades, I don't clean them. I've, I've used mineral spirits on it to get the pine off. Yeah. After Jim, Jim Dockrell said alcohol hand sanitizer works uh, good on them too. Good, yeah. I know that of, I have the times that I've cleaned them, I've used oven cleaner and it seemed to do, uh, do real good. Lay it out in the sunlight, uh, sun for a while and get the steel hot and then spray that oven cleaner on it and let it sit. And they, it's just like your goo in your oven. It cleans that stuff right off. I will tell you this much after you clean them, especially if you use oven cleaner, because that's a very caustic substance, uh, you will want to put some, um, 
Now, most of mine are starting to rust now because I haven't done them in a while. You want to spray them down with a lubricant like WD-40 or something, oil them up a little bit because that, that will definitely cause them to rust. Jim Dockrell says in capital letters, don't use oven cleaner on a carbide blade. It will corrode the silver solder. Really? Hmm. I can believe that. I, 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 I can uh, kind of believe that, but uh, I have seen people do it and on carbide blades, so... I'm not going to say that that's wrong or right. I just, I've seen people, but matter of fact, Izzy Swan cleans uh, with, he's had a video out where he was cleaning it with. Uh, well, I thought the carbide was brazed on anyway. I didn't think. I, it was yeah, I don't, I'm going to have to check into that. Hmm. Uh, brake cleaner. That's a good one. That's another good one. Brake cleaner. Yeah, brake cleaner. Yeah, brake cleaner will eat everything up. Yeah, it will. Except I've got some. I might try that on mine. Yeah, I, like I said, I don't know that much about how they're put on, if it's silver solder or if it's how it's welded to that. So uh, that is something that I'm going to look into and find out about, though, because I know for a fact that I've seen Izzy Swan do a video on his channel about sharpening and cleaning blades. He uses the Harbor, he used the Harbor Freight sharpener and just made some adjustments to it to, uh, and sharpen some uh, blade, carbide blades. So, Somebody out in the chat earlier tonight said that that Harbor Freight sharpener is a good deal. It is. It, uh, it needs some a little TLC to make it cut really accurate. Is it that, it, it's, it's about 58 bucks. Yeah, but it is a good deal. Yeah, with the 20% off coupon, you'd probably get an even better deal. Aussie Man says silver braces. I, I'm not doubting that. I don't know. I have never asked, um, you know, how they're put on. I know that they're on and they hold very well, and it takes a hell of a hit to knock one of them off. You very seldom do uh, you not. You could probably uh, contact your, your blade manufacturer there and ask them, uh, you know, uh, yeah, I'm sure. they're the source. I'm sure that Total Saw Solutions would answer how theirs is put on, but I wouldn't know if that's the same way that all manufacturers put them on. I, I, you know, I found an article on on doing just that. I think they soak them in uh, in, uh, in in oven cleaner. Saw tips on oven cleaner, and no effect was found on the carbide or the braze alloy. Oven cleaner does not remove any paint and the ex, uh, expensive plastic coatings, which may be the best reason not to use it. Also see our article, Do Cleaners Hurt Blades? Anyway, I put the link in the, in the cool. chat. Yeah. I don't know that. I just know that I've seen other people do it. Usually what I do is I usually got a pan, and I'll if I want to clean them, I'll drop it in the pan, and I have a gallon of lacquer thinner I keep in the shop. Yeah. And I'll just, I, don't, I don't know. I just pour lacquer thinner over it and let it sit for a couple hours and come back with a brush and clean it up. That lacquer thinner eat right through. It'll eat all the letters and stuff off the blade too. I think yeah, I, I think the brake fluid cleaner would probably take all the letters. Yeah, out. I don't think it's going to uh, eat this off because I think this is laser etched into this. But uh, but then some of the tire, uh, not tire, but wheel cleaners might work. Yeah, I use mineral spirits, so I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, Dan Inge says that Harbor Freight Sharpener does take a bit of fine tuning for each blade, but it sharpens it like new. See, and that's what I heard about the Harbor Freight one that it worked really, really good. You just had to take your time and setting it up and setting it up right. They give it a try on your on your thin Nerf blade. Uh, blade. I don't think so. I don't think so. Somebody Somebody report how good it is. Oh, yeah. come on. <laughs> that's going back to Total Saw Solutions. Someone mentioned brake cleaner in the chat yep. and acetone as a substitute. Well, but that is, uh, so you need to tailor what you're going to be cutting. Uh, if it's a lot of ripping and if it's going to be a lot of what I would say um, junk ripping, then buy a cheap blade. Go the I've had very good success with the Diablo, uh, very su good success with um, the Walt blades, and uh, you know buy one of them and do your you know your junk stuff, and then get a real nice blade, kind of you know uh, like this one here for doing your really nice wood. 
when you're wanting to make a cutting board. And that's oh, one, something I was going to show in a few seconds ago. This, if y'all remember me talking about it last time, how I had to adjust the pattern. Well, I finally got it adjusted out. So that looks much better. See how all, this is not real deep all through here. There's a lot more. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah, definition. So that turned out real nice. Hey, there's been a couple things in the chat tonight, and I was going to mention it to you. People wanted to know what the change was and who won. Oh, um, the change was, and I there's four people, and I forgot about that because of this week has been so hectic. There was four people. Ken Moon was one of them. Is Ken here? No, no he ran off. He was waiting for his prize, and you and he ran off. Well, I know I didn't say he won a prize. There was four oh. people. I haven't chose it. Yet, uh, but there was four people people that got it right. Ken Moon was one of them, and I can't think of the other ones. And the th difference was for everybody to know is it's coming up in just a second. It's on my sponsors list. If y'all remember when I had Tim Sway on here, Tim Sway said he would send me one of his Tim Sway squares if I would put his name up here as a sponsor. And there it is. There it is. Ta -da! So, how do you like it? Have you used it yet? I haven't used it yet. I haven't really had any chance to use it, but yeah. So the difference was what's changed in here is Tim Sway's thing is up here now as a sponsor because he sent me one of his squares for free. And I would highly suggest, you know, go, you know, it supports him. You know, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try to use it and see. And then the next thing was, this is my second cutting board out of my scraps. Uh, this one's a little thicker. This is a full one inch where the other one's like three quarter. And uh, bigger. This is about 16 by 16. And this is um, mahogany, um, oak, walnut, maple, mahogany, oak, walnut, and maple. And this is, I'm, I think I got enough scraps to make one more, and then I'm going to have to go to, to the, uh, and I was talking to my wife the other day. I think I'm going to make all my kids uh, cutting boards, kids and the grandkids that are, I have two grandchildren that are up and married and have one of them has, Michaela has a child and make them for them, for their families, for something to remember me by. So is the next show going to be how to make knives uh, to go along? <laughs> <laughs> so there's uh, a little a Spartan knife block. We'll, Spartan have Joel, knife. Uh, yeah, we'll have Joel Crawford on the show. He can Joel show Crawford you to show us how to make the Spartan knife block. Yeah. I got mine. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, okay, I hope that y'all kind of uh, learned something tonight. Um, trust me, in the last 15 years, well, ever since I got out of construction and closed my construction business down and then open up my wood shop, which has been about 15 or 16 years now. Uh, I did not realize how much there was to learn as far as about stuff like saw blades and band saw blades and stuff like that. I mean, I go to the store and buy a damn cheap saw blade, throw it on my circuit saw and cut two befores for framing and, and, you know, stuff like that. We never thought about that. You get a good uh, ripping blade or a combination blade with, 24 teeth and you're happy and you cut like heck with it and you keep two or three of them on the tool trailer so when it starts cutting dull you throw it in the trash can and put another one on so and then uh, and, and i knew about the how many teeth and stuff like that it's just i've learned so much more by making this into more of a full-time woodworking than carpentry cut thing on things just like that the man saw blades you know you go buy uh, a Sears bandsaw blade or a Home Depot, go buy a bandsaw blade, throw it on your bandsaw and cut. And you play hell cutting. And you're wondering, like, if this is all this thing's got, it's a piece of crap. And then when you finally get around to getting a good blade and you put it on there and you get the thing set up right, you go like, holy crap, I have been wasting so much time on this thing and it cuts fantastic. So, And you learn other things and little tips and tricks over the years. Don't get me wrong. But uh, you learn a lot of other stuff, too. But I just hope that uh, I was able to bring something that y'all, somebody did not know out there. Uh, the fewer the teeth, where it be on a bandsaw blade or on a uh, circular saw blade, the rougher the cut, 
uh, it's going to cut more aggressive and that's for good for ripping junk wood or ripping wood that you're not worried about. The more teeth, the smoother the cut. And it also has to play with how the teeth are actually angled, the curve, and then how the teeth are ground. So those are things you need to know when you're buying these saw blades and you cut that beautiful piece of wood and it turns out looking like the saw cut is like crap down the side and you're wondering why. It's because you might have the wrong blade on your saw. If you want something real smooth, you might want to go to more teeth or to different the uh, teeth cut differently. So, so I hope I hope somebody's learned something about something that I brought up. I learned I got to get a new bandsaw blade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, next week is how do you pronounce his name? Jock Doc Hildebrandt. Oh, Hildebrand. Doc's coming on next week. Yep, Doc's on. Oh, cool. Yeah, um, yeah that's great. Yep, Doc Hildebrandt. Hildebrandt's on next Bring week. The broom. Yes. Bring I the broom. I will be running a tight, tight schedule next week because I am going to be at Rockler all day, mm. and I'm going to try to cut out of there by four o'clock. Um, we're doing demos and stuff all day long. Uh, so I'll be on the scroll off, off and on all day long. We got people going to do some turning. We got all kinds of stuff going on. And so I'll try to get out of there at four o'clock. I, I should be home by six. And so, which would be plenty of time for me to rest for a few minutes to start the show, but it's going to be kind of tight. I we'll, already told, we'll keep them busy for you. Yeah, I already <laughs> told my, uh, the manager that I was cutting out of there at four because I had the show. And he said, yeah, by that time, usually in the afternoon, it slowed down. Most of the people come in the morning and then right after lunch. And then you get that lull in the afternoon. So and I think they close at seven on Saturdays either anyway. So anyway, but yeah, we got Doc on next Saturday. And uh, I guess that's all I've got. Anybody else got anything or any more questions? Good show, Russ. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Great yeah. show. Uh, Dan Inge said that de good, decent blades at Timberwolf. I've I've never owned a Timberwolf blade, but I have heard people uh, talk really good about Timberwolf blades. Um, so that's something you might want to check out. Uh, Highland Woodworking sells that wood slicer blade, and that's the blade that I used on my bandsaw. Uh, before I run across this uh, sawblades.com and the hardback, and the, uh, the wood slicer blade works fantastic. The problem of it being is when you get, as far as when I was doing six and eight inches, it usually was okay. But if I stepped out anything over eight, and eight was pushing it, if I stepped up the 10 or 11 inch boards to try to uh, resaw them, that blade wanted to wander. And then if I st uh, tried to do a bowl blank, the blade wanted to wander. It didn't want to cut a nice circle and everything. And uh, so that's the blade I used to use. And I don't know if Timberwolf, um, I'd like to look at uh, somebody look into that. If Timberwolf sells hardback and softback blades, the only person that I know does is sawblades.com. And uh, Izzy Swan uh, told me about them. So, Hey, Russ, how much impact do you think the Carter blade guys have? on your bandsaw a lot a lot i have a harbor freight and older mine is one of the original harbor freight um bandsaws which is the exact duplicate of the jet and the uh, the old jet and the old powermatic matter of fact if you go watch um alex snodgrass at the woodworking shows that yellow uh, Powermatic and that white jet that he uses are the exact same saw as my Harbor Freight. And it had guide blocks on it. And I bought the Carter guides and put it on that Harbor Freight and all the difference in the world. Cuts and with especially, even with the um, Timber, or not Timberwolf, the uh, Wood Slicer from Highland Woodworking, it cut fantastic. It just didn't do the resawing that I wanted it to do. And now that I've got that carbon uh, back back blade on it oh man it slices through 10 11 inch i can cut a piece of walnut uh two or three inches thick and i can lay a, i can cut a quarter of an inch on it just as straight as can be and have a quarter of an inch piece of walnut you know 10 inches by 
two foot long. Beautiful. What's the big difference uh, between the stock ones and the... As far as the rollers? Well, everything. I'm not real familiar with them. Well, now, mine didn't have rollers. My Harbor Freight had cool uh, uh, cooling blocks, which um, build up heat, even though they say they're cooling blocks. They're pieces of um, material. Graphite? Yeah, they're graphite pushing up against the blade. You, you can't convince me that it's not creating some kind of heat. Where um, you're, where the Carter rollers are actually uh, rollers bear roller bearings, they roll with the blade. They're turning. Uh, I after cutting heavy, heavy, heavy on it with resawing, you can reach up and touch the roller blade the um, guides, and they're cool. They're not hot at all. So they, uh, you know, there's less friction, better alignment. You've got one in the back, and then you know one on each side, and it, they just work better. No, it just comes to uh, you know, to me it kind of like it's common sense that any kind of material, I don't care if it's graphite or what it is, it's actually rubbing across the blade uh, continuously is going to build up some kind of heat. Yeah, yep. And they're highly, uh, they're machine tolerance, very high machine tolerance. To the the guides are so they're very nice guides. You can feel them; they're nice, heavy. Uh, they adjust real easy. Um, it doesn't take a minute. Once you learn how to adjust it, it doesn't take a minute to adjust it. You get you, you get that right off their website then? Or is it they... Yeah, Carter. Okay. Yep. Because that's what's wrong with my saw. It's it's a it's just a shop tool and it it's it's so junky. It rides on the side of a bearing, the back of the blade, and it's it's not good. Yeah. Carter products. Uh if you have any questions about what will fit your saw, if you don't see something there, you can call them and they can usually uh, tell you, oh, yeah, okay. So it's got to be like a Harbor Freight because it's, it's, a, it's a tool shop. It's yeah. a cheaper, just small band it saw. It'll make a lot of difference, trust me. It made all the, I was ready to, you know, I'd had yeah. it so long, I was ready to throw it out the door. And I went out, then I ran across the Carter Blade guys and I saw Alex Snodgrass. I don't know, six or eight years ago and showing, watched one of his videos on uh, how to set up a bandsaw correctly. And then I saw the Carter guides, got in touch with Carter and uh, bought the guides and boom. Yeah, I'm going to get that. And then that hardback. Yep, uh, it started working fantastic. Uh, Dan Inge said, uh, uh, oh, no, Aussie Man said, I use Carter bandsaw guides, Carter fine blade stabilizer on one inch blade, really good and sharp turns. Yeah, that stabilizer is something else. That turns your bandsaw into a scroll saw. That's what he uses to cut all those little tiny deer out with. It's an eighth of an inch blade with that stabilizer. Uh, Dan Inge said something earlier, or if I've already read it. Those Carter folks are famous country singers and singers, and now famous bandsaw folks too. <laughs> there was also a president by the name of Carter, wasn't there? Jimmy yep. Carter. Yep, he's like ninety-five, something like that. Still building. Yeah. You should look at his house on Google Earth. It's like a yeah. little, little. Yeah, it's not, they live in a nice. Yep. Yeah, a farmhouse. He's, yep, sure do. It was good to see him at. Um, um, who, who, what dignitary just died here a while back and they went to his funeral? John McCain. Was it John McCain? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They were John McCain. Yep. John McCain and Carter, Jimmy Carter was there with his wife at John McCain's funeral. He's and, quite uh, a guy I, now, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, I love, you know, he's, he is, I didn't care for him that much of a president as far as some of the things he did, but <laughs> as a humanitarian, he still to this day goes out and builds uh, with that you know, house. habitat. Habitat. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Still goes out and helps the men build houses for people. Still yep. to this day at 95 years old. So uh, as a humanitarian, the guy's fantastic. He's a really great guy. I think he made some poor choices as a president, but hey, who am I to say? You know, wasn't it, wasn't good to be in the military when he was president either. No. <laughs> yeah, no. And that's what some pretty about. crappy equipment then. Yep. So, but as far as humanitarian, you couldn't ask for a better president. He's, you know, 
very humble man, very nice man. So I think that's about all we have here. What time we got at nine? Nine thirty-five. Hey, Russ, are, are, yeah. are we going to cut out now? Oh, do we want to? Or are you wanting to stay longer? Or? I'm just, just asking. You, what are you asking? For? It, it's the finale of the show. We're going to cut out. Hmm. Yeah, cut out. Cut out. <laughs> where did, where did sure, I'm shot. sure, Al. We can do that. Yeah. Why don't we just saw, why don't we just saw our way to the ending? Yeah. Al, I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna cut out. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> Not to be confused with cutting up. That's um, true. How many cutouts? <laughs> Do you well? That's not a cutter. That's a scraper. I've uh, got three. One. <laughs> I've got three. Well, I've got four. I got you beat. Yeah. Shucks. Hey, do, do these do these count? <laughs> do these count? <laughs> oh, scissors. We're doing scissors now. Too. We're doing scissors. <laughs> Those look like baby clippers. Yeah. I've, I've got letter openers. Yeah. <laughs> They're not really sharp, but they kind of sharp. I have sharpened. This is a letter opener. I have sharpened my letter opener. It actually has gotten dull over the years, so I took an eye. I use a 5 8 inch wide hardback on my Rikon. I'll go to half inch wide when it breaks. I, I would suggest, suggest that, Jeff. Uh, Robinson, and I'm not the person that brought up that. Uh, I talked to Izzy about that. I've talked to other people about that, the people at sawblades.com about that. I talked when I was buying blades from Highland Woodworking, I talked to them about that. And all of them came back with the same consensus. When you're using like a horse, horse and a half, a smaller, what you would say, hobby shop like we have, uh, type of bandsaw, you don't the half inch is all you need a half inch will rip a piece of wood just as good as a three quarter inch will okay well if you jump up where you have the more commercial a 200 a two, 240 volt you know uh two horsepower two and a half horsepower three horsepower that's when you can jump up to the three quarter or one inch wide blades but as long as you're using something like a you know a 14 inch band mine's a 14 inch harbor freight a 14 inch Rikon, the half inch will do everything in the world that you want. And it, and it like I said, they told it, it takes more horsepower to turn a wider blade. And I was like, you know, it makes sense. It really does. So I, I thought the wider, the better, man, I was going to order me a one inch for resawing on that little 14 inch. <laughs> and I was like, well, that would have been a big mistake, obviously. So but you you learn, and I've learned. I've had mine for I don't know for a long time, and I, and I learned stuff, and I, and to talking to people, and I wish that I, I I now I ran into Izzy Swan, and he gave me so much great information on that, and then I saw Alex Snodgrass on how to set it up, and then I saw him about the Carter Guide. So you know uh, you know when you have a lot of these uh, information like YouTube where you can watch, and then you have people to talk to, it's fantastic some of the information because it'll make it'll make your job a lot easier sometimes you'll see like the blades for instance uh, uh you go buy a, a 20 degree hook blade and put it on your miter saw and when that thing lifts up off the ground and slaps you in the face then you'll realize oh maybe i should have bought a negative hook so uh rush while yeah. i'm while i'm thinking of it before we end up shutting down here totally uh might want to Remind people that the Atlanta show is what less than a month now. Yep, it's the fifteenth, sixteenth, and seventeenth of March. Yeah, right, yeah, right out of month now. Yep, so, right out of month. I've already got uh, every. I've got my motel, my plane, and my car rental all ready. You know, and, and if anybody hadn't gotten their ducks in a row or needed a reminder out there, the when it is. I, yeah, you're winding down. I don't know that there's any more rooms left at the uh, uh, Southern Woodworkers. Uh, price. Uh, that's something you're going to have to check. Uh, if y'all are on Facebook and thinking about going, go to the, if you're not a member, go to the Southern Woodworkers on Facebook, but he had got a deal on rooms and um, 
I was already a, um, how do you want to put it? Um, member of their Marriott rewards. Member. Yeah. And so my, I'm actually, it didn't save me any money and it was about the same as what I was getting with my Marriott rewards. So, um, yeah, we, me and my wife like Marriott's. There's pretty good, not bad prices for the rooms and they're really nice motels. So, but yeah, check that, check that out. Cause I don't know that that's any more left. Uh, as far as getting into the woodworking show, there's going to be no problem because they sell tickets there. So yeah. you won't have any problem getting in that. It's just, I don't know about the motel. If you're wanting to stay there right there or right across the street where a lot of us makers are going to be staying. So, but that's good. Yeah. It's on the 15th, 16th. I'm going up on the 14th, which is a Thursday and I'm going to uh, visit my friend, Rob Austin, which I think was out there in the chat earlier. Uh, visit him at his house and everything, and then uh, I'll stay with him that night and then um, get up and go to the show the next day. And actually, um, I have been invited and I got to get a hold of Zach. I said I would help him to be one of the people that was there in the booth, but I've been invited to be over in the Gwinnett Woodworkers booth, and uh, they're going to set up a scroll saw for me, and I'm going to do some scrolling while I'm there. Cool. So, cool. Yeah. Yep. Are you going to do a show from the. Uh... No, we're not doing a show from Atlanta. Anything? No, we're not going to do a show from Atlanta. But yeah, I'm going to be doing some. They're supposed to actually he called me today and said send him some stuff for the. Uh, they're going. I think they're going to have a banner made for me. So I was pretty bummed out. I went to the doctor Tuesday to find out what was going on with my back, and I have to have back surgery in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So I can't Ooh. travel. I'm Ooh. not going to be able to go. Bummer. I was all set to go, but I'm not. Gonna what kind of anything. back surgery, if you mean uh, like vertebra? Yeah, lower back. Uh, like probably all five and six fused, and then in the mm. summer, like a two or three months later, I've got to have this one fused. So, wow, I'll have two of them this year. Wow, wow, what do you have infused in your neck, Jim? Um, let me see. five and six, six, yeah, that's so I, I don't talk over Katie anymore, but <laughs> I think six and seven, yeah, that's what I had done with six and seven. Okay. All right, we'll talk later. You can tell me how long it yeah. took to recover. <laughs> um, Jeff Robinson. Um, <laughs> Jeff Robinson said, "So you can resaw with a half inch wide blade if the right tooth, right tooth count. Yes, without any problems. I have a half inch uh, hardback blade from SawBlades.com, and I think I don't remember what my tooth count is. I'd have to look again." Uh, I don't remember what the tooth count is, but um, yes, I resaw 10, 11 inches uh, tall without any problem. I have a yeah. riser, riser block on my uh, Harbor Freight, which is a jet riser block that fits on my Harbor Freight, and I can do 11 inches without any problem with a half inch blade. Yeah, Jeff, like I was saying earlier, I watched, I really like David Picciuto's videos. He's one of the guys that I'll watch as soon as they pop up. But man, I mean, he's got like a four tooth blade on that thing, and he's resawing really yeah. thick stock stock down to a quarter. If inch you're like doing, that. yeah, and that's another thing. If you're doing resawing, you don't want a lot of teeth. You yeah. want like a smaller Ooh. teeth count because um, in resawing, that's what you're wanting to do. Is that's if you're doing eleven inches, it's got when that blade starts cutting at the top, it's got to carry that sawdust all mm -hmm. the way out to the bottom to get rid of it. So but he'll use that same blade and make bandsaw boxes out of it. You know, he know just like moves the the guide down weird. And, and there he goes, you know. That's weird. He's really he's good. Be, if he's doing that, he's got to have a half inch blade. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll have to go back through and look at some. I of would videos. almost be willing to bet he's not doing it with a three quarter. I'm sure you're not making. Band oh, no, it's not, it's not that thick. Yeah. A half inch will do bandsaw boxes pretty easy. Yeah. They don't make as tight as corners, as, but it'll make pretty tight corners. So, yes, you won't have any problems with a half-inch blade. That's all you need. Dan Inge said, I had C3 through C6 in my neck fused. Jeez. It took a long time to heal. Wow. I, I can imagine. That's, that's three vertebrae fused together. Well, it's weird because I had, two years ago, I had implants put in, and they, the bone grew over them. So now it's just like they're fused. Now I got to get the one done under the implants. Um, so. 
Paul, you had uh, three, four, oh. six, and seven done last year? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Yep. We were uh, neck buddies for a while yep. there. I think I remember that because you come on the show, you had your neck brace on. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I remember that now. How are you feeling now, Paul? A lot better than I did before. Yeah. No, it, it's made a big difference. Yeah. Good. good. That's good. All right. We, I think it's time for us to get out of here. We just keep on mumbling around and talking about this. So, although we've got 38 people watching right now and I got 40 thumbs up. So I'm a happy. Hey, if, if you give us, if you give Alan I the information on how to get onto your channel, we could have a show while you're in Atlanta. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just remember folks, no matter what you do. <laughs> just for fun. Yeah. We could have a let's talk about Russ show. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Or let's talk without Russ. <laughs> Get in that show. Uh, all those stories that you it'll be called didn't tell how care. Russ's shop. With friends like you who needs enemies. I mean, you really. could just put a you could just put a camera up there and point it toward your sponsor screen. Yep. With nothing in the shop, and then we could just have a share <laughs> it with friends like y'all who needs enemies. 41 thumbs up. It just popped up 41. Thank Ooh. you. It keeps growing. Maybe we need to stay longer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm ready to cut out here, guys. So thank you very much. Oh, Russ Roast. <laughs> um, <laughs> said, Steve, a Russ Roast. <laughs> have a Russ Roast. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate you, too. Oh, wow. So, you know, I'm going to be right around the corner from you on the 14th over at Rob's house. So I could come around there and see you. Okay. So don't think you're just like can get away with saying too much stuff. Um, Dennis Godson's been out there. Steve Carmichael, Aussie man. Uh, Rob Sidney, Jeff Robinson, uh, Jim Dockrell. All those guys have been out in the chat. Uh, Dan Ingerbritson. Uh, all those guys have been out in the chat tonight, so I appreciate you so very much. There's only one thing we got left to do, and that is just give me sawdust, lots of sawdust all around me and everywhere. I like it flying all around my shop and even in my beard and hair. Good night, everybody. Thank Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, y'all. Bless. Good night, everyone. Keep on. You can say good night more. Go ahead. Good night, everyone. Bye, bye. Good night, more. You Who's can't more? stay here, but you got to go home. <laughs> yeah, I forgot that <laughs> one. Yeah. Yeah.